as Pentecostals, there's a few scriptures that we all like. We love to preach on. And one of our favorites was one that the Lord stirred me on today. Acts 1.8 Most Pentecostal preachers can quote it. For ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. Great scripture. But as the Lord stirred my spirit today, there was a word that jumped out and burned in my spirit. And it wasn't a word that you might think of. It was the word both. Come on. And I thought, Lord, the word both. What is so unusual about the word both? What, what, what is there about that? And God said, because I'm not just going to use people in one place. Come on. I'm going to use you in more than one place. If you do something here, I'm going to multiply it somewhere else. Are you listening? I'm going to take what you do in this town and then I'm going to take it and multiply it over here. Come on, that's it. I'm going to take what you do in Jerusalem uh -huh. and I'm going to multiply it into Judea. Come on. And then I'm going to take what you do in Judea and this is what I really like what God stirred in me. And I'm going to multiply it under the uttermost parts of the earth. It's going to be exponential. It's going to get greater and greater and greater and greater. We sing that song, but I don't think we realize what it means when we sing little as much. If God is in it, don't you never underestimate what God is doing when he takes the little bit that you give to him. That little seed that God takes in your life, he's going to multiply what we do right here. Somebody might wander into this tent and who knows it may be multiplied to the ends of the earth. Somebody give God praise in the house tonight. Oh, hallelujah! Praise God! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I went to a camp meeting several years ago and there was a man come up and he told me they had a place to eat there on the grounds and he said brother you're not from these parts are you I said no he said I want to buy your supper Man, preacher never turns down a free meal. Amen. I mean, that would be ungodly. <laughs> he bought me a meal. We got to talk, and he said, I'm a milkman. I deliver milk to people's houses. <laughs> Won't tell my age again. And I thanked him. He said, I live in Zinyo High. 
couple years after that, I was preaching a revival there in Xenia. Large church there, run about 800. Oh, we were having a great revival. One night, I preached and there, the altars were full. There was a young lady, I guess she's about 22, 23, started running down the aisle and fell in the altar. Oh, she was just sobbing. And I looked around and all of a sudden I saw the milkman. And he ran over, laid his arm around that young lady. And he started crying. I hadn't noticed that it was there. But I recognized him when he put his arm around her and began to cry. And when he got through praying with that young lady, he came over to me and he said, Brother, you remember me? I said, Yeah, you're the milkman. He said, That's my daughter. She just got saved. Little's much. If God is in it, both, both, don't you underestimate. Both in Jerusalem and in Judea. Amen. If you give a cup of water, that cup of water may be a spring. How many times, how many times have we felt like nobody pays any attention to what I do? Nobody notices what I do. I remember as a boy preacher in Phelps, Kentucky, just as a teenage preacher. They received me an offering one night. And there was a little hair lip boy there. After the service was over, he come up to me. He came home for me. He fell to each other. He fell. I didn't put my offering in. He said, I didn't have much. Yeah, I didn't want people to make fun of me. I didn't have but 13 cents. And I wanted to give it to you. You know, I've had a lot of people give me a hundred dollar bills that I forgot. But I remember that 13 cents. That 13 cents. When I've been down and when I've been, I'm preaching about both. In Jerusalem and in Judea. Oh, it's carried me to the uttermost part. when I needed something to pick me up and carry me to the next place where God was sending me. When we need God to stir us, you should receive power. When you're down, God has something that will carry you 
you over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, he does. Oh, we're waiting. We're waiting for God to send us a John the Baptist or an Apostle Paul or a Peter the Apostle when it may be a little hurly boy. Come on. I wish somebody would praise the Lord in this house. leaving and he talked to God and he said God I thank you for using me in this revival God spoke to him and said you didn't have a thing in the world to do with it he said I didn't he said God I fasted and I prayed and man I preached my heart out and my my suit coat was wet every night and you know I got down in the altar and I prayed in that altar 45 minutes every night God said you didn't have a thing in the world to do with it he said well if I didn't he said who did God said get up in the car set him over in a poor section of town he was scared to go over there went into a little old run down shady town he said I'm afraid to be over here I'm afraid to be over here come on now come on now Hey, I lived in Africa for part of four years. I can say this. Hallelujah. Black folk over here. Come on, man. Come on, man. You know how they are. Mm -hmm. Get out of your car. Look around. Get out of your car. Go in that house. Am I talking right? Come on, brother, help me here. Go in that little run down apartment building. The Lord told him to go three flights of stairs and knocked on the door. Nobody come to the door. The Lord told him, said, open the door. He opened the door. 
and he went in. Earth looked like grandma on her knees. She was blind. Cried, oh God, save my city. Save my city. Lord, I can't go to church. But I can pray, save my city. She wasn't praying for black people. She wasn't praying for white people. Can I say it? Can I say it? She wasn't praying for black people. She wasn't praying for white people. She was praying for both. She was praying for both. She was praying for both. And until America's church, Come on. until America's church, black and white, can get beyond where we are, we're not going to see the outpouring that God wants to send. Nigeria with cerebral malaria and typhoid fever. They were praying for me. They were calling out to God for me. They were helping my family. And you know what's going on now? Those people are still calling me. Saying, Bishop, do you still love us? Do you still love us? Are you praying for us? Come on. When are you coming back? When are you coming back? When are you coming back? I want to tell you something. We need a revival. Yes, we need a revival. Yes, and we don't have a hundred years to wait on it. We need the Baptists. We need the Methodists. We need the Church of Christ. We need the Presbyterian. We need the Episcopal. We need everybody. This is a time that we need to join our hearts together. Is anybody with me? Is anybody with me? Is anybody with me? Is anybody with me? Does anybody want a revival? This is not about me. This is about us. This is about us. I want you to be hear what I've got to say. I 
hear preachers get up and say this, and I understand what they're saying. They say the Bible is not about us, it's about God. And I understand that. But I don't agree with that. The Bible is about us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should be saved. God didn't need us. He was good and fine without us. But God made us. And God loved us. And the whole Bible and the whole plan of redemption is about us. And Acts 1 and 8 is about us. You, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon who? You! You! And you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea Jerusalem and Judea both both of them Come on. Amen. Yes. That's right. Come on. You shall be Jerusalem. Witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea, both of them. Yes. You shall be witnesses in Smyrna, Murfreesboro. Come on. Yes. Both. Yes. Both. Yes. Amen. Both. Yeah. Laverne? Yes. Both. Oh, Nashville? Yes. Both. Both. Alexandria? Oh. Both. Don't leave me out. <laughs> Don't leave me out. Yeah. Lisbon down? Oh. Both. Tennessee, Kentucky? Yes. Both. Come on, brother. Both. Both. Yeah. Both. starts moving outward. Outward. It starts here. When you leave this place tonight, Amen. you're not going to leave the Holy Ghost under this Amen. If you do, you're wasting your blessing. You're wasting your gift. Praise the Lord. You want to run around this tent a hundred times? Have at it. But if you leave that under this tent, all you're going to have is one tired body. Come on. But I'm not going to waste my energy running around this tent 
if I can't take it home with me. I'm going to take it home with me. I'm going to take it home with me. And when I say I lay me down to sleep, thank you, Lord, I got my Holy Ghost with me. I took it home with me. And when I get up in the morning, I'm going to have it with me. And if I go somewhere tomorrow, I'm going to have it here. And I'm going to have it there. Wherever I go, both places, I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it. it is to deal with witchcraft. I'm not talking about Harry Potter. If that's witchcraft, you shouldn't be watching that mess. I'm letting your children watch it, your grandchildren. I preached the funeral in Nigeria and we were buried there and there was a witch doctor at the end of the grave that had sworn an oath and he was practicing voodoo and had a machete and had sworn an oath that as soon as that man was buried and the ground covered his grave that he was going to use that machete on me. Hey, it wasn't a joke. It was real. It was real. Brother Lord, you know what I'm talking about. It's not a joke. It's real. Do you think I was scared? Not really. Some of them said, you need to be careful. I said, I'm not careful, I'm saved. I'm covered by the blood. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When I got through, I said, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, earth to earth, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and you demon spirit out of hell I rebuke you in the name of Jesus I plead the blood of the Son of God against you and he fell backwards it works in America and it works in Africa saw those demon spirits in India and it worked there. I saw those demon spirits in Thailand and it worked there. I saw those demon spirits in Jamaica and it works there. And I've seen those demon spirits sitting on the backs and I've seen those same demon spirits sitting on the pews in the church of God I said it I said it I've seen them bring their little video games to church and sit there and play video games. You say they're just bored. No, they're not. They got demons in them. Call a devil a devil. A devil is a devil whether it's in India or Africa or in Tennessee. Oh! 
<laughs> and God is God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. He's God in the Father. Yeah. He's God in the Son. Yes, he is. He's God in the Holy Ghost. He's God. you apologize for who you are. Don't you back up. Don't you back down at work. Don't you be ashamed. I had a doctor stand over me and they thought I was having a stroke. He said, who's your doctor at this hospital? And I looked him straight in the eye and I said, Jesus. Amen. I didn't have a hospital. He said, He said, who you want to send the bill to? He said, we might have to send it to the Sisters of Charity. I said, send it to whoever you want to. Come on, brother. I know whose I am. Because I receive power. I know. I know what's inside of me. Both. Both. I believe God has started work in this tent revival tonight. Yes. I believe God has used me here tonight Amen. to lay a seed, to plant a seed here. I really do. And I believe that God will use Brother J. Boyd tomorrow night to cultivate this seed. Paul planted and Apollos watered. It took both of them. Did you hear me? God used pastors and evangelists. He used that fivefold ministry in the church. Both. Use them all. And that's what he's going to use in this tent meeting. That's what he's going to do. Let me tell you what you need to do. You need to invite your friends and your neighbors. If they don't have church, at their home church tomorrow night. Or if they're not going to church, you need to invite them to be here tomorrow night. Amen. We have church at our church tomorrow night, so we won't be able to be here tomorrow night. But we will be back. But you be here tomorrow night if you possibly can. Because this man of God will bless your heart and he'll be used to the Lord. Right. To lift your spirit. Right. Brother Green, I know this man. Can I tell on you, brother? I, I, I don't like to say things about people and what they do unless they allow me to do so. But when I was working as a missionary in Africa, this man helped to underwrite my ministry 
as a missionary in Africa. He done everything that he said he would do. I appreciate that. Amen. He's a man of his word. He's a man of character and a man of integrity. Come and listen to this man of God Wednesday night. He'll bless your heart. Amen. Amen. I don't know. Thursday night. Am I supposed to tell? <laughs> I don't guess I'm supposed to tell that I'm supposed to preach Thursday night, but am I supposed to tell that or not? You tell it. Did I tell it? Well, I, well, maybe the rapture will take place before then. I hope so. I hope so. God bless you. If you're here tonight, if you're here tonight, you got a need in your body. You got a need in your life. And you need prayer. There's men and women of faith here tonight that will lay hands on you and pray for you if you've got a need. This is the time. This is the hour that God will meet your need. If you knew, if you only knew what this preacher's been going through, you would look at me and you'd say, there ain't no way you preach tonight. But that's the God I serve. That's the God I serve. That's the God I serve. He blesses you in the morning and blesses you not at both. Amen. He blesses you when it's hot and bless you when it's cold. Both. He blesses you when you're empty and when you're full. Both. Oh, he's a mighty God. Amen. Amen. Just lead us in that, lead us in that course. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, what a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, yes, what a mighty God. We
And if you don't need a miracle, we're going to have you get behind them and we're going to pray for them. And we're going to, and there's going to be miracles here tonight. Praise the Lord. Mountains is going to move tonight. This ain't just in any old, just a, this ain't just your average altar call. This is a miracle night. This, you're going to, you're going to see results tonight. Hallelujah. You're going to receive results tonight. Tonight is the night of results. The night is the night that I came for great expectation. Hallelujah. When we lay hands on you, God's going to heal you. Hallelujah. You need to get up here and believe God for your miracle right now. You see this woman right here? Sister, tonight. Hallelujah. Tonight, you're going to forget your sin. Hallelujah.